In this video I'm going to show you how to capture images of the night sky using your telescope and a equatorial mount. It doesn't matter what type of telescope you use, you can use one like this, a Newtonian, or you can use one like this, a refractor. I will also show you what software to use or what you can use and how to use it. If you're new to the hobby or you're just looking to get into it, I would definitely suggest buying a used telescope. You've got the Newtonians like this one here, which you can pick up pretty cheap. Um, I'm in the UK, so I got this one from um, a shop called Curry's. I think they're available also at Argos, and I think they're just over a hundred pound. I think they're about 130 pound. Otherwise, you want a refractor like this one here. Like this one here. Ignore this on top because we will not be using this. We just want this bit here. You can pick these up pretty cheap. This one new I got from a company called SV Boney. Um, it's one of their cheaper telescopes, but I can't fault it. It's absolutely fantastic. One of the best things I've purchased in a long time. But you can pick up these pretty cheap, used, or under £100. The mount, on the other hand, they can vary in price dramatically depending on what you're looking for. If you want to go as cheap as possible, you should be looking at something like the EQ3. Um, sorry, the EQ3 Pro or the EQ3-2. Um, Anything up from that will cost more money, but they are better mounts. They will give you more capacity to put bigger telescopes on, so forth, so forth. The mount should come with a tripod, which looks similar to this. Or you might end up with one, which is a bit more hefty, which that's for the Skywatch mounts, which is a stainless steel one. My tripod, for instance, is what they call a pier. It is a tube normally created by concrete. Uh, I used a galvanized steel tube filled with concrete and you use something to have as a base for your mount head, which is this to sit on. I have this because mine is a permanent structure and stays in this position all year round. So your first thing, once you've set your mount up, is you need to have your telescope pointing north so download an app on your phone which tells you your compass unless you have a compass and you want your telescope so this way pointing north because you need to be able to see the north star polaris your second if you can important thing is see if you have an obstructed sky to the south so this is the south you can see I've got these trees here, or it's a hedge. But try and put your telescope somewhere where it has no obstruction to definitely the north and everywhere else. So you can get a good, clear view of the night sky. For cameras for your telescope, you have an option. You can either buy yourself a dedicated astronomy camera, which there's quite a few on the market, but they are not cheap. Even second hand, they still hold pretty much their value. The cheapest option is to buy a, a second hand DSLR camera, something like a Canon or a Nikon. Personally, Canon is going to be the better option just because there's more compatibility when it comes to aftermarket products or the filters, for instance. If you are using a DSLR, you will need a thing called a T-ring, which connects your camera to your telescope. Um, you also need a camera which has a disconnectable lens for the T-ring to connect to. There is other options. You can use your phone with a smartphone adapter, which would go on the eyepiece. So, Basically, it will connect around here and allow you to put your phone straight to where your eyepiece is, which I think are pretty cheap. They go anything from about £10 upwards. So for tonight, I'm going to be using the refractor, which is 
the easier one to use. Um, the Newtonian style, they have to be collimated. I might do a video on that later on, but for the moment we're going to use this one. So first things first, once you've got it, take that off, once you've got it on your mount head, you want to disconnect the clutches and you want to make sure that it doesn't swing. If it does, it's unbalanced. So all you do is undo this knob here and you would move it in and out, basically like that, until it stays in place. Once that one's done, then you would do this clutch, undo that, and you want to make sure the mount again doesn't swing. Once that's fine and it stays in any direction, then your mount is balanced. So next on the list is to do the polar alignment, which you use this bit right here. There's a little tiny eyepiece just underneath. So there's a little eyepiece right there, but basically it's like a mini telescope inside. And that is what you use to find true north. You have to adjust to the North Star Polaris but we're going to have to wait until the clouds go down for that. One thing to look out for when you're purchasing, especially a used telescope, is to make sure it's got either a red dot finder, which is this, or there's another star which is called a finder scope. You turn it on and there's a little red dot and then you've got these little knobs here, there, and there's one there which is adjusts how high and the, um, how low and how high and back and forth left and right the best way to do that is to undo your clutches without a camera connected use your eyepiece point at something far away so you can see it in your telescope so for instance I would point at that chimney over there and I would focus on the antenna on the aerial if as long as I can see that in here then I would turn that red dot on I would then try and center the telescope on the aerial on that chimney to a certain point say for instance where the the fork is and pick one side so I'll say the left side of the fork I adjust the red dot so it points exactly at that left fork once that's done then you pretty much are good to go so now the sun's gone down and it's gone a little bit dark currently it is half past nine I can start to see stars. As soon as this happens, this is when you want to start to do your polar alignment. So, quick tip, disconnect the clutch so you can swivel the head, lock it, just to get it out of your way, because you need to look through that. And if your camera, for instance, is in the way, ooh, yeah <laughs> so that's a tip I do I'm now polar aligned for this scope as you can see there is no guide camera on top because I'm not using one for the purposes of this video and I don't need one so we're now looking for the North Star so this is south at the moment I can't see anything oh to light there's a star right there I don't know if you can see that straight up if i'm correct that's vega so we can see stars so i want to go straight for the north star which i can barely just see with my naked eye but the polar scope inside your mount will pick it up very easily and you want to set it to a certain position so I use this app there PS Align Pro I got the pro version it was only a couple of pound you get a little bit of extras but if I show you the screen that is where you want to set your star alignment right there this is one of the possible compasses as such you'll see inside of your polar scope. Once you're then polar aligned, then we can start with the star alignment. So we shall run through that. So 
you want to turn on your mount and so forth and get your hand controller and basically follow through the instructions the mind is asking if I want to start from park so you yeah, either press no or yes and then it will go through the default settings it's going to ask you for the date so today's date oh it's American so it's months first and date so currently yes it's the 8th month so we're in August and it's the 11th today 2024 um, the time currently is 21 39 52 wait for 52 and there we go enter daylight savings currently no and then it will ask you for setup that's where you want to go first setup don't need date so you'd press down which is not these buttons it's this button right here time <clears throat> you want to go all the way down to alignment I'm going to do a two star alignment there is one star don't do it there's three star most of the time so two star is the easiest and there's the first star we want to have a look for if you don't know the stars or you have a struggle there is a handy little app you can buy not buy sorry there is an handy little ha app you can download which is Sky Portal, right there. It's from um, Celestron. So there's a compass button, press compass, and it will activate. But in the search bar, you can search right here for the star you're looking for, press search, and an arrow will point upon the screen and tell you which direction that star is. So you know roughly what you're looking for. At this point, remove your dust cover on the front, extend your tube if you need to, and turn on your red dot. And then we want to make sure that it's pointing at the star that the go through system wants it to point at. You should have your laptop or your PC or whatever you're using turned on already. The first program we're going to use is one called Nina. Nighttime imaging and astronomy so that's the program we're going to use there it is okay so you will first come to this screen, which is your equipment, which is just over here. So you want to do a search for your camera. So you want to do a fresh search. If your camera doesn't show up straight away, possibly if it's your first time, click on the drop down and you should see your camera in within this list. If you have the relevant, make sure you have the relevant up to date drivers. So mine's right there, SV Boney, and then connect it's a little bit delayed because I'm remote accessing this laptop to the computer on the pier right so we are connected this camera has damage sensors as well as you can control the heat or how cold the, the camera can get the cooler the camera the better it will be image wise if it gets too hot you can end up with too much noise in the image and it will be like a red spots so with this camera we can cool it so i go to zero degrees celsius so turn it on and the camera's now turned on and it's cooling because it's cooling and we're not taking nothing extreme we can go to then imaging here because i'm not using nothing else your screen should not look like this to an extent I've got some plugins you should you're looking for image which is just at the bottom here click on that tab and that's what yours should look like over in this corner is where you set your one you can also test 
So we're going to go for the shortest. So I'm going to put 0 0.1 seconds. Um, I'm going to keep it on a loop. So it's basically like a little video. And then I'm going to say start. And we're going to start getting images from the camera and the telescope. And we need to find that star. So at this point we've found the star. If you press this button here, it will bring up this crosshair. So you can get it pretty much as spotting as you want. As long as it's in within that second row of circles, you're pretty much fine. Once you're happy with that, you would then press enter. Oh, sorry. So to move the mount, looking for the stars, you use these keys. And once you're happy, you press enter. And it will search for a second star. And it is basically rinse and repeat. So at this point, and you're pretty much happy with how center it is, you want to use your Batonoff mask, which is this. This clips onto the front of this telescope. Just place it on, not too much pressure, just so it sits there. And what that will do is it will make a very funky pattern on the star. So if I zoom them in, there we go. Don't know how clear you can see that. I'll put a picture of what it's meant to look like, but this is where you then focus. So that is the pattern you're looking for. Don't know if you can make that out. That means you're perfectly focused on the star. Now that's done, and we have done our two star alignment. We can now find the image or the target we're looking for. So now that's done, we get we press enter, so forth, give the coordinates, press back. Right. At this point, this is where you then put in what you're looking for. So, I'm going to do a simple target, which is the Andromeda Galaxy. So, we press 4, which is also M for Messier. And we're going to put in 31, press Enter, and 31, view object. And now the mount will go to where it believes Andromeda is. Right, now we have set our location. This is where you then will change. So we're gonna do a test shot. So we'll click at the top one, and we'll do 15 seconds. Um, we're gonna change the gain, up it to 200. If you're using a DLSLR, DSLR, you would use, say, 1600 to 3200. Um, and we'll give it a quick test. And see what we get. See if we're pointed. We should be pointed in the rough direction of where we need to be. So hopefully we get something. And there it is. Right there. There's Andromeda. So. I'm going to drop this down to a 10 second. I'm going to quickly just do some aligning. That's roughly where I want to be, so we'll just let it settle. There we go. And that is perfect for me, right where that is. So, this is now where we do our tests.
So we should do a 30 second exposure and turn off loop. Actually, we'll change that. We'll do a 60 second exposure. Actually, we shall see what we get. I don't know if you can hear, it's a very clear night tonight, but there's wind. The weather didn't say anything about wind. I'm going to leave this running. You can see just in the bottom left here, there's your exposure. It's currently on 10 seconds out of one minute. 19, 18, 20, 23%. So I'm going to let this run so you can see in real time what I see. So, it's not bad, we'll try and get a little bit more, so we're going to increase it again. So if we go back up here, and um, we'll do a two minute, and we'll try this. Why this is doing, in the meantime, I will show you how to set up the sequences. So, go to new target. You can, this is your choice or not, but you can give it the name. So, you can call it M31 or Andromeda Galaxy or my first, so forth. This is what you're looking for to take. So, I'm going to go for 50. There is a delay because I'm running through the wireless. Right. Once we figure out the exposure time we're looking for, it would go here. So we did a 60, it went bad, but I'm going to try one. 20 seconds, so two minutes. So I'd put the two minutes, 120 seconds there. We're doing light frames. We're not using filters. Any of this, oh, and the gain, we need to change the gain because we're currently at gain 200. So oh, if you're using your ISO, your ISO would be say 1600 on the um, on the Canon cameras for instance 1600 you don't want to go above 1600 it's not the best you can go below a little bit but definitely don't go higher once you've figured out this basically it will tell you it's going to take an hour and 40 minutes it will tell you the time now and the time um, roughly when it will finish and then once you're ready you press go down there and it will automatically do what it needs to do. Let's go back on this. We're at 90%, so we're just waiting still. Ignore this shade of red here. I've got a red light running in the background so you can kind of see what I'm seeing. But here we go. You can start to make out some of the images. Sorry, some of the spirals of the galaxy. So I'm going to keep running at this. Might try one more. I'm going to try a three minute. Ooh, excuse me, so 180. We'll try a three minute exposure. Two minutes seems good, but we'll try a three minute. Back to the sequences. Right. On this bit, what you want to do is press add, and this is very important. You want exactly the same, but for this bit where it says light, you want to change this to dark. 
So your light, that's your type of pictures you're taking. So your light frames is your photos of the nebula or the galaxy that you're taking photos of. Your dark frame has to be exactly the same settings at the same night, but this time you put the cover back on your telescope. And that basically eliminates any um, glowing effect that the sensor would have on the camera. There is some more calibration frames. So you can do your bias frames and your flat frames, which can be done in the daytime. Flat frames are very simple. Basically, you would set your camera to the fastest shutter speed possible, and you would either put a, a white light with a t-shirt on top of your telescope, or point it straight up at the sky. And what I like to do is a piece of paper with a piece of glass, and it's a blank white sheet, basically. And them settings are again as fast as possible and you need roughly around half of your totals so if you've got 50 you would only need about 25 and then once you got that it would be the next stage so let's go back to images i should turn this light off really if you do start getting star trails just bring down your time there we go, done. And that looks very good. So if we can zoom in a little bit. The slightest little trails there. They're just slight, you might be happy with that. I'm personally not that happy with that. So, three minutes was too much. We had a little tiny trails. Two minutes was fine. So I'm gonna now try two and a half minutes, see how it goes. And then I'm gonna let this run for the next hour and 40 minutes or so. And then after that's done, I'm then going to do the dark frames. Tomorrow I'll then go and stack all the frames together using a program called Deep Sky Stacker. It's another free program, so this is not costing you nothing. And then I will show you how that works. Once you've had your night of fun, we'll say, depending on what time of year it is, um, we then move to the computer. So you will need free programs. These are all free to download. So there is Deep Sky Stack It, Cyril, and Gimp. We're gonna start with Deep Sky Stack It. So we shall open this up, bring it to the right screen. There we go. And so in your saved image directory from Nina, you should have a file with your darks, flats, and lights. And remember that your flats are with a bright light facing into the lens. You can now use the, the sky put a white t-shirt or a piece of paper I use a piece of paper and a piece of glass and you take the fastest photos you can at the same ISO or gain setting and that is basically that so we're gonna start with the lights so I'm gonna select all so we have 70 images and I'm gonna put them drag them straight over and you should have a pop-up will all ask this. So we put light frames in, so we will select light. And at this point, you can click on them and see what you've got. 
if you use this slider at the top you can increase the brightness so it gives you a bit more sense of what you're looking at then we'll go back into this I'm going to put the dark frames in so the darks darks so they're now in so if you see here we've got 70 light frames and we've got 68 dark frames don't know why there's 68 it's just a thing and then we also have the flats you don't need many flats roughly around half of what you've got so if we put the flat frames in there we go flats done then you would click on stack checked photos these are your checked photos if you don't like the look of one you can untick it but to be honest most of the time I just leave them ticked so we would click that this page will pop up this page will then tell you that you have this many photos if there's an error it will be in red so there's no offset I'm gonna ignore that because that doesn't matter and it will tell you if there's something wrong or so forth so if there's anything wrong there is one setting possibly you should change if you click to stacking settings this window will pop up um, and it's to do with lights make sure this one is done and your parameter is 2.0 otherwise that's it press OK and it would then start to register and stack all the images together once that's finished you will end up with a pretty dark photo I'm not doing it in this because I've already done it and you will have an auto save file normally in the folder where your light frames are so normally where it says light mine's got S because I just put an S on the end so in here normally at the bottom you will see a file that will say auto save once you've got that it's then time to move on to the next part so we'll shut this program down and we're going to open up Cyril so you can either go to open or you can drag and drop the file so I'm just going to drag and drop the file which I know is done um, which is this one for me and this is the picture see it's extremely dark but you can get a sense of what you're looking at if you click on auto stretch and there's your photo at this stage you can then manually start stretching your photo so you would go to um, image processing generated hyper stretch and you would come here and you can select a foreground we'll say so if we went to say somewhere dark uh, we'll say about here let's do a little square click on the square here we'll max that out then we will change from auto stretch back to linear and then we'll start doing the stretch factor I'm happy with that so I'll do it again press apply it will reset all these parameters so I'll click that again turn this one back up and keep going once it's at this stage you can then change again so if I was to say I'm going to select this area of nebulosity select that I'm not going to touch this just yet and I'm just going to stretch and see what happens see that looks good to me personally I'm very happy with that and then I would then at the stage close this and then I would save click on the down button which you can save as and then give it a name s s put it in the file wherever you want and select the file type so if you want JPEG if you want to share it so forth JPEG's gonna be a bit the one you're after save 
so forth, so forth. You can show that there's a 32, 16. I'll just leave it as 32, that's fine. And that is basically that. Another option. So if we save again, but this time we'll save it as a TIFF file. And we will put it, so we'll put it on desktop. And um, we'll leave everything as it is. And that's that. Done. Close this program down. And then we would open GIMP. Right. So we want to open the file, wherever it is. There it is, file. And we want to go to desktop. I don't know what the image was called because I didn't give it a name. Give me one second. Right, there we go. So, once you've found the image you need, so, there you go, here's the image, and basically what you can then do is start giving it a few touches. I've only just started using this tool, but I'm absolutely fine with how um, Cyril does it. Um, so I'm not having too much of a problem. But you can go to levels, for instance, and you can change some of the levels. So we go for right there, press OK. Um, back to color, we'll go to curves. And curves, you can pull up, pull down. It's just a little bit. No, that's not too bad for me. I don't mind that. See, this doesn't look too bad at all. Oh. Pressing one button. And then once you're happy with that, again, you would save. Oh, give it your name. So this is M31, the Andromeda Galaxy. And once you're happy with it, that is that. And then you would end up with your final image. Which for me, is this. Thank you.